hey guys welcome to another video on machine learning in this video we'll be learning how to implement the locally weighted regression in python so um, this video assumes that you already have the mathematical understanding and uh, conceptual background required for locally weighted regression um, but if you don't know what's locally weighted regression and how to achieve it then go back and watch my previous video I, I've, I've completely explained what uh, and how locally weighted regression works so uh, yeah, without uh, much delay, let's just start writing the Python code for implementing locally weighted regression. So uh, first things first, we'll start off with importing our dependencies. We're going to be needing a couple of dependencies. So we'll import NumPy as NP. And we also need Pandas. Uh, we'll be using a CSV file to read in our input. And uh, we'll import matplotlib just to plot our uh, regression. Um, at the end after or after we fit the model yeah so our imports are in place the next the next thing that we're going to do is uh, read in our input into the into our program so we can say uh, data we can um, call pd.read CSV and pass in our file name so uh, I'm using tips.csv so that's my file name. I'm, I'm using this file name. So it has uh, six attributes and one uh, one continuous value. So it has total bill, it has sex, smoker, day, time, and size. And uh, tip is the continuous value that we are that we actually care about. So um, that's our data set. We read it into our program, um, into our variable data, and. Uh, uh, we'll actually extract two columns from the data set. Uh, we'll extract the total bill column and the tip column. So we can say column A um, is uh, numpy array and we'll pass in that column off of data. So it's total bill. Total bill. Yeah. And uh, we'll do the same thing for our second column, which is uh, the tip. The tip column so that's going to be column B right so just to make sure that we have read the uh, that's that our program is reading the file properly we'll just print it out just print uh, so just um, so yeah um, these are the our column names and there are 244 entries so we can print out the head to see the actual data so Oh uh, yes, this is our data set. So we are, we are, we have successfully read it into our program. So now what we're doing um, now what we're going to do is uh, we'll convert these columns into uh, matrices. So numpy matrices. So you can say matrix column A equals uh, np dot mat, and then pass in um, pass in that uh, column, which is column A. Uh, we'll do the same thing for column B. All right, so now we'll just grab the we'll just grab the um, number of columns. So that's going to come from the shape shape of the matrix. So so the shape of the matrix is going to return uh, a tuple. So we can say m equals np dot shape, and it takes uh, one parameter. We'll, we'll pass in the matrix. So it's going to return a tuple of values, a tuple of two values to be precise. And the first value is going to be the number of rows, and the second value is going to be the number of columns. So zeroth value is going to be the number of uh, rows, and one. So first value is going to be the number of columns. Right. So that's done. So we'll just initialize a uh, once matrix. Um, that's go that that'll be of the order uh, one comma m. So we'll do that by saying one equals np dot once. So there's a once method off of np, and we'll just uh, the dimensions are going to be one comma m, and uh, the data type is going to be int. So yeah, it's, um, just run this so that the output is cleared. Right. Um, so now uh, what we are going to do is we are we are going to generate our input matrix by stacking um, the transpose of the one matrix upon, uh, I mean along with uh, the um, the total bill column. All right, so we can do that by saying, uh, so just comment it out, horizontal stacking. So we can do that um, x, which is our input matrix, uh, np dot h stack. That's that's going to stack it horizontally, and it's going to take a tuple 
um, that contains two different uh, matrices. So one is going to be our one matrix. So actually the transpose of our ones matrix and then the, our total build column, and the column A matrix. Actually the transpose of that matrix, right? So we can just print out our shape and see it's going, it should be a two comma, uh, the number of entries. The number of entries here is, um, let's see, it's 245 so since it's zero index it's going to be 244 right so it's a uh, it's extra shape we just print out the shape and so it's going to be two comma two yeah 244 comma two sorry my bad right uh, that is done here so we are pretty much done with setting up the input and having our input and output matrices I and mean, not the output matrix but the input matrices that we need to uh, work with and uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to define a variable to have the final predictions y pred equals we're going to call a function that actually does the local weighted regression for us so we can call that function local weight regression and then we can pass in our input matrix our column b and then the our bandwidth so this is the k value actually so um, 0.5 we'll set it to 0.5 so it's the bandwidth so we'll talk about um, what is the K? What's the bandwidth uh, all about in a moment? So, yeah, we'll just quickly go ahead and write this function to do the local weighted regression for us. So we can say uh, define. We can define local weighted local weight regression. So yeah, local weight regression um, that takes the input matrix, the output matrix, which is column B, and the K value, right? So yeah, uh, we'll just quickly grab our um, grab the dimensions of the input matrix by saying np dot shape. So we just um, we're just interested in the um, number of rows, um, right? So expand. So number of rows is going to be in the m variable. So then um, we can initialize in an empty matrix for our predictions so we can say y pred equals uh, matrix full of zeros or, or is it z e r o s yeah zeros and that's going to be the order of m right so um now uh, we're going to run a for loop for i in range of zero to m and we're going to be um um, taking the predictions so prediction a prediction for a given point or for a given um, example is generated by um, multiplying the local weight of that point with uh, the input uh, value so it's going to be y prediction of i um, is going to be uh, x mat of uh, i and we multiply it with the local weight um, so lo uh, local weight can be a function um, we can pass in our input and output matrix and and we can pass in our point and get the um, weight in that locality so we'll write another function for that so we'll just uh, in write the function in location right here and it's going to be the input matrix of i which is the point and the input matrix along with the output matrix and the k value um, so after this uh, loop is done, we're going to have uh, the predictions in our uh, y pred uh, um, matrix. So we will just return y pred. So yes, that's done. And uh, so now we'll go ahead and define this uh, function. Let's um, local weight. So we can say define local weight. <coughs> and it takes in four parameters right yeah, four I, it's it, it takes the point it takes the input matrix it takes the output matrix and the k value so um here um we can we can write a separate function to pass in our uh, point and get the uh, kernel um, get the kernel to assign weights or yeah we'll, we'll write a separate function so we can say uh weight equals um, we'll call kernel and this is going to take our point and uh, assign the weights and we can pass in our point our input matrix and the k value 
So we'll just define the kernel function in a moment. So um, we'll just quickly write what our local weight function does. So uh, the local weight is going to be uh, w equals um, we can uh, we'll say x dot transpose x transpose multiplied by um, the weight that we receive from the kernel function multiplied by the input matrix and the we take the inverse of this whole thing and multiply it with uh, again the x dot transpose multiplied with uh, the weight matrix multiplied with the y matrix transpose so um, if you're confused uh, where this is coming from it's actually coming from here so if you have an hypothesis h of x naught uh, which is equal to x naught transpose beta x naught then after you pass in your uh, point and uh, estimate the weights using this kernel function uh, which is uh, exponential to power minus um, x minus x naught square by 2 tau square um, this, is, this is not exactly a Gaussian function, but it's, it looks like a Gaussian function, but it's actually a bell-shaped kernel. Um, so then beta x0 is going to be this. Um, it's um, transpose of the input matrix multiplied with the mate weight matrix and the input matrix. And you take the um, inverse of the whole thing and again multiply it with the transpose of the input matrix and multiply it with the weight matrix and again multiply it with the y matrix right so that's what we are doing here so it's um, pretty much the python equivalent of that of this formula right so then uh, we can return this uh, local weight right so now it's time to define our kernel function so right and uh, we'll just right the Gaussian kernel. So we can say kernel. Now this method takes in the point and the input matrix and the k value. Right. So yeah we'll grab the shape again. Np dot shape of the matrix, the input matrix. And uh, then I uh, will just uh, like initialize um, an empty weights matrix or or yeah and it's not an empty weight weights matrix it's it's a diagonal matrix so an identity matrix um, so all the weights uh, will be one at first so it's going to take a tuple I'll pass in M and uh, we'll run a for loop for no it's not how you write for loop it's for J in range M. Um, so we're, we're going to uh, follow this so it's pretty much this function right here so each e raised to the power uh, minus 1 by 2 x minus x naught whole square divided by tau square right and that and the tau is the bandwidth the the k variable that we are passing here all right so first we take the difference we say difference e is the point minus uh, the x of j on uh, the input of that um, example and then we can say we can say weights of uh, j comma j I mean, since this is a diagonal matrix j comma j uh, equals um, it's e power minus so we have this function np dot exp um, so we can say different difference in multiply it with uh, the transpose of its own and then divide it so we can uh, divide it by now here we can do a negative 2.0 multiply it with uh, k square that's k square that's pretty much this um, bell shaped kernel so it's not exactly a Gaussian kernel um, it's, it looks like a Gaussian kernel but it's not it's not a Gaussian kernel it's a bell shaped kernel so yeah, once this loop is done we're going to return the weights matrix the which is um which has the weights for that local um vicinity of values right so um i think we pretty much have all the functions required to run this uh, locally weighted regression so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, plot this um 
regret regression line for our data so what we need to do first is we'll just um, take a copy of, uh, of our input matrix and sort it so we can say x sort uh, equals um, x dot copy so it's going to give return the copy of an array right or, or a matrix whatever so and uh, we need to call sort on this array and uh, we need to specify the axis x is going to be zero in this case by default axis is minus one but but that doesn't do anything so specify the axis as zero which is the x-axis right and uh, then we can use matplotlib to you know um, plot a scatter plot our data we can pass in the column a and column b arrays and uh, we can have that in some color um, blue maybe that's a good color and uh, we can plot our line so it's it's a uh, sorted array or sorted array um, everything in the sorted array but just the first index first column I mean uh, the second column technically the columns start from zero so it's the second column right zeroth column and the first column so we're just taking the first column we're just inter interested in the tip uh, data right so then we can say uh, y predictions of the um, so here we actually need the the sorted index um, so sorted um, we can find out sorted index using the input matrix so we can say everything inside the input matrix uh, with the with only the first column I mean not the zeroth column but the first column and we can call um, arc sort method off of this um, just pass in zero so it's, it's just going to return the index that can be used to sort this array you can also specify the type and the kind of sort you need so you can just use the kind uh, parameter and just say if you want if you want a quick sort or any any kind of sort that you want you can just use that attribute you know so this um, arc sort method is going to return the index that can be used to sort this array, right? So then, then we, what we do is we can, yeah, we will also specify the color. We can make it yellow. I mean, yellow, yellow goes well with uh, blue. So we can also specify line width to be to be five pixels, right? So that's done. So we can just uh, quickly put on label for our x and y axis. So we can say this is going to be the x label is going to be the total bill and her y label is going to be uh, tip right so we'll, we'll call show off of blt i think this is it so if we actually run this off of this data set so we should actually see the output so we'll just run everything and uh, so this is actually the regression line um, that we generated for this data set so you can see how it, it varies for every local vicinity of point so if the data is too uh, varying and the standard deviation of the data is too high then so it just takes the uh, data points in that vicinity and just you know just simply is performing linear regression for that vicinity so that's pretty much it for locally weighted regression and i'll give the links for this code in the description of this video just make sure to check out my previous videos on machine learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel um, i'll see you guys in the next video till then take care bye bye